Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Let's talk money. Welcome to this week's episode of the Money Mastermind Show. Today we have Jason Vitag from Frugal. He is going to talk to us about uh, how you can budget to create your dream lifestyle. Uh, Jason is the author of the forthcoming book, You Only Live Once, and he is also the entrepreneur behind Frugal, that's P-H-R-O-O-G-A-L dot com. Welcome to the show today. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be back. Yeah. We also have today on the Money Mastermind Show, we have Peter Anderson from Bible Money Matters. We have Tom Drake from the Canadian Finance Blog. Uh, Kyle Prevo from youngandthrifty.ca should be joining us shortly. Uh, Glenn Craig from Free From Broke is not with us this evening. And I am Miranda Marquette from Planting Money Seeds. And I will be the moderator today. So let's go ahead and just sort of jump right in uh, with the big question is, can you really create your dream lifestyle? A lot of the time we think about uh, life as this uh, list of milestones that we have to hit. You know, you, you graduate from school, you get married, you have kids, you buy a house, you work for 30 or 40 years and then you retire and then then maybe you get a few years of living life and then you die. So <laughs> what is uh, is it really possible to create your dream lifestyle and create it now? Yeah, so go I mean, ahead, Jason. Yeah, I, I I definitely think so. Uh, I mean, I followed that traditional path that you talked about, graduate high school, go to college, get your dream job, um, and then eventually I said to myself, I'm not I don't feel satisfied. Uh, something was missing, and I don't necessarily know what that that was. And so I think when we talk about dream lifestyle, we we have to uh, not just think about the financial goals that are that we tend to set or think about when we're thinking about dreams. Oh, I dream about owning a big house or a luxury car. Um, it really is about kind of having a, a vision for your life. And so I tend to think. Um, or tell people when you're thinking about your dream lifestyle, you should definitely think about uh, the vision for your life, you know. And the vision is taking all your hopes and dreams uh, into this idea of, of living with purpose and with meaning uh, and then aligning that. So I definitely think it's possible, um, but there's a process that goes about achieving that dream lifestyle sooner rather than later. And I, I think one of the things, too, to point out is that the dream lifestyle for you might be different for everybody else. And I kind of wanted to get an idea from the rest of our panelists, just what makes your dream lifestyle. So, Tom, uh, what is your idea of, you know, a dream lifestyle? What's your what's your goal here? Well, I, I think sometimes when people think of a dream lifestyle, they kind of think, like, they, they dream, dream too big, maybe. <laughs> they don't actually. They don't look at it realistically. It, it becomes this this big idea that they'll never reach. But really, I think uh, when I think of just even the term lifestyle at all, I, I think more about having having more free time, spending more time with my family. It's not about like how much money I'm making or anything like that. So. Um, yeah, leaving le leaving a corporate job would be a good start. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> because uh, that would kind of hit those goals that I have of, of sort of spending more time with my family and everything. Um, I, I don't think it's so much about uh, I, I need to be a millionaire to do it or anything. It's it's more just arranging what I'm doing and how I'm doing it to to have that time. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. What about you, Peter? What do you think? Well, I think for me, when you're thinking about you know, creating that dream lifestyle, I think first it, you kind of have to just sit down and think about what's most important to me, what what matters most to me. You know, and again, like you just said, that can vary pretty drastically if you're, uh, you know, a single guy or, or a family with several kids or whatever the case may be. You know, so for me, you know, what's most important to me is, is my family and, and uh, being able to spend more time with my family being able to uh, volunteer and give to causes that I believe in and, and uh, things like that. So a lot of my 
creating my dream lifestyle kind of revolves around being able to do those things, being able to give more, to spend more time with my family and things like that. So. Yeah, and, and that's interesting that everybody here is kind of, Jason has talked about finding a purpose, and uh, Tom and Peter, you've both talked about spending time with family. You've talked about a lot of these kind of intangible things that really make life, uh, in my mind, worth living. And when you look at the research, uh, the research shows that a lot of millennials feel that way. A lot of millennials actually want to live with purpose and have that flexibility to pursue uh, things that give meaning to their life and, and not necessarily worry just about money. A recent uh, study from Fidelity found that millennials were willing to take a pay cut of 6000 to $7,000 if they could work in a field or work in a job that had them feel like they were doing something meaningful. And so I think that that's part of, uh, a, a big part of where we're going is, is figuring out your purpose. So... Uh, going back to you, Jason, now you quit your corporate job and sort of struck out into this entrepreneurship. So what did it take for you to live your dream? What kinds of things did you have to prepare to get there? Well, I mean, the, the first step was changing my mindset. Um, I was uh, mindlessly consuming and obsessively complaining, uh, saying that I was, you know, I wasn't living the life I wanted to live and I was, you know, just shopping just to kind of make myself feel good. And so eventually I, when I realized that there's a disconnect in terms of the life that I was living and kind of that dream lifestyle, I had to make a change. And that wasn't just, okay, well, I'm going to stop spending uh, because then moments when I was depressed or sad, I would go and do retail therapy, and then that would take me away from kind of achieving uh, the things that I wanted to do. So I think, I think that's really important to address the money mindset, because that, in effect, uh, impacts our financial behaviors, our decision making when it comes to a variety of things, especially when we're making purchases that we don't necessarily need. Uh, one of the key things that I like to talk about is when people uh, say, oh, um, I live a luxurious lifestyle, for instance, right? So they have the big house, the fancy car, the nice, expensive brand name clothing, but then in reality, they're spending 60, 70 hours a week working. And so uh, the reality is that their lifestyle isn't luxurious. It's a work-centric lifestyle. And it's kind of coming to terms with that and being aware uh, that that is the fact. Um, and so for me, that's kind of the realization, part of this awareness, self-awareness that I went through. And that had a lot to do with say, well, I'm making six figures. I, I, I get to purchase the things that I want to do. But then I was also living paycheck to paycheck. So something there, there was a disarray in my mind, disarray in my financial life. And that made me make the changes that I needed to make. Yeah, and I know I know Tom that you you have a dream of quitting the day job sometime. Uh, are there some steps you're taking to get to that point? What are some of the financial things that you kind of have to do to get your ducks in a row? Well, it's similar to what Jason said, uh, certainly controlling the spending. Um, even sort of the spending you to some degree have to do, like uh, paying paying down the mortgage, which would, would certainly help. Um, it's uh, whenever you've got those kind of big commitments there it's, it's hard to to sort of go without some, some guaranteed salary um, but uh, yeah it's just like financial planning for anything what whether it's retirement or, or just uh, an earlier version of it kind of thing um, I, I think getting rid of some of those those big commitments not being obviously not being in any real debt or anything uh, kind of lays the groundwork um, to, to be able to really do what you want yeah, that makes a good point. And what about you, Tom? Uh, I just asked Tom. What about you, Peter? I mean, one of the things you also have to think about is if you have a family. Um, Jason, of course, doesn't have to worry about that. Um, <laughs> and, and I have one less person to worry about. Uh, but what, what kind of different things you have to consider as you're building your dream lifestyle when you have a family, when you have a, when you have a partner or when you have kids or, or both? I think probably one of the biggest things for us is just being cognizant of the other person's needs as well. You know, having those shared goals that you can talk about and work towards together and, 
and not just thinking about your own needs and, and the things that you want for your dream lifestyle. You have to find ways to work with your spouse and significant other to uh, you know come up, with, come up with those shared goals that you can look towards together and, and work towards. You know, and that can help you to uh, really live a, a shared dream, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, it, it, I think that's kind of important when you when you're married and that you have to be able to sit down together, you know, every once in a while and, and talk about those, uh, your plans for the future, where you, you're planning on going, what you want to do, and maybe set some goals for where you want to be heading together. You know, if you don't do that, you can end up going two different directions without even realizing it and kind of drifting off into a direction uh, you're not even realizing that you're going. So. Yeah. Yeah, kind of maintaining that focus and then making sure you're doing it together is a, is a really big thing. So, Jason, are there some sacrifices that you have to make if you're going to do this, if you're going to leave your, your big corporate job and head on out, hit the road to financial wellness? What are you going to what are you going to do uh, to make that, to make it happen? What are some of your sacrifices? I, I mean, one is it's first it's understanding what you truly value. I think um, when we're setting financial goals, we set financial goals kind of based on things that society or, or our culture tells us that we need to have, and and that may not align to the things that matter. And so um, there are going to be things. So, for instance, um, when I was dissatisfied at my job, uh, my corporate job, people were telling me in order for me to be happy is that I should buy a house, <laughs> and that was kind of like the next stage. It's okay, you know, you got you got the uh, the senior executive job, and now what you're missing is become a homeowner. That is the next stage. That's what's going to give you uh, the satisfaction that you're missing. And eventually, I just realized I'm like, well, wait. What I want to do is kind of have freedom to travel all over the place. I wanted to be able to uh, be a digital nomad and kind of work wherever I want to work and not be. Uh, uh, glued to a to one location and so again part of that that growth allowed me to say wait owning a home is not part of part of my dream and so yeah in, in many ways when you look at financially um, if I if I bought that house during the great like the height of the great recession there would probably be some some major growth and investment uh, return in that but I can tell you right now that quote unquote sacrifice of not buying a home below market value uh, has been one of the best decisions of my life because I am doing um, uh, kind of like the work that I want to do and serving my purpose. So there is sacrifices, but that really depends. Again, I want to stress on what you va what you truly value because you might think, okay, I really want to own that car um, and I want to travel the world. And so I, I see this a lot that people are willing to spend five hundred dollars a month on a car payment and then tell me they can't afford to go on vacation. Uh, but what they're saying is that you know they value the car over their vacation, but the words coming out of their mouth is completely different. So there are some sacrifices in terms of that, but I mean we have to take a step back, figure out, gain clarity of what you truly value, and then set those financial goals that align with those um, well, what matters to you first. Yeah, and one of the things that I've kind of noticed is people uh, look at at me sometimes and and think that I'm making a sacrifice, but it doesn't feel like a sacrifice to me. Uh, for, I always use my TV as an example because it's a 32-inch TV, and I've had it for 10 years. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like an LCD. It's still a flat screen, but it's like this 10-year-old 32-inch TV. And people look at it, and they're like, oh, my gosh, you, you must be, you know, really really poor because you had because you can't afford a 50 inch TV, a new 50 inch TV I mean why haven't you upgraded your TV and they, they act like it's this big sacrifice like I'm sacrificing something because I've got a 32 inch TV and the reality is, is I don't watch TV that much and I don't care about the TV and I'd rather spend the money on something else. So people look at me and like, oh, you're making the sacrifice. Well, no, I'm not. It doesn't feel like a sacrifice to me. And I think, uh, Jason, uh, when you're talking about, oh, well, figure out your values and your sacrifices, all of a sudden the things that you leave behind that, that you originally thought might be sacrifices, maybe you find out they're not really sacrifices after all just yeah. because you're doing something better. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I haven't owned a car since 2011. 
And so <laughs> everyone will tell me, it's like, isn't it that time that you, <laughs> you own a car? And I'm like, why? <laughs> I, uh, I, like, I, I live in the city, so it's easy for me to, get, to use public transportation. I mean, the bus system where I live in Jersey is horrible. So, um, but uh, everything else works. I mean, there are ride-sharing, Uber. And I can get to the places I want to, and I realize I, I'm healthier because I stay within this two-mile radius. So this this sacrifice of not owning a car and having this freedom to drive wherever I want to has actually became like what you said. It wasn't a sacrifice. It actually improved the quality of my life. Uh, and so that's, again, aligning the things that, that we want with what we value and what we think are sacrifices aren't necessarily sacrifices. They could be improvements towards that dream lifestyle. Uh, so, Tom, uh, I'd love to know what are some of the things that you're doing that uh, that are kind of th that you're leaving behind to help you reach your own personal goals. Um, I, I, I certainly have a car and I have a house. So I'm not doing that good at. Oh no! Well, that is the thing. Now. I have a car too. It's all good. <laughs> it's all about it's all about what your your personal things are, right? Yes, so, I, so I completely consider. You. I consider those necessities, but <laughs> but uh, we don't do a lot of of other shopping though, really. Like uh, we, everybody I know that I sort of I work with and and my friends and everything, it's it's pretty common to go out and just buy new things all the time. And and I may have a couple fifty inch TVs, but it doesn't mean uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean that uh, I, I'm shopping at the same rate as a lot of people I know. Like and and it. it it's kind of what Jason said. Like you pick what, what sort of motivates you, what what you, what towards your, your actual goal. Like and constant shopping and stuff just it doesn't really do it for us. Uh, uh, when we when we first had our kids, we kind of went overboard with with things like toys and stuff. And <laughs> we we've realized through the years now that that we 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 did too much shopping there, and it wasn't lined up with any of our goals at all. Uh, all these toys were kind of sitting around and it, here we are spending money taking us away from where we want to be and it's not really being used and appreciated so so we've we've cut back there too. Um, yeah, we just we really don't spend other than on the, the things we actually truly want. And that makes a lot of sense. What about you what about you Peter? How have you kind of adjusted your lifestyle to meet your your goals yeah well gosh you know I, I sometimes I don't really feel like we're cutting back that much you know I, <laughs> I just I just bought a new car last weekend so or a week and a half Ooh, ago fancy. So I'm pretty new to that whole <laughs> spending a ton of money on a car but then again I, I have to drive 25 miles to work every day so it kind of uh, necessitates a car but anyway I think it really comes down to realizing the things that you value in your life and being okay with spending money here and there you know maybe a car is important to you so you, you save money mm -hmm. for that but on the other hand I don't I don't buy the newest cell phone every time a cell phone comes out I just have a cell phone and I use it until it dies basically I only got rid of my flip phone a couple of years ago um, when I got a free phone because of my blog uh, to write about it so <laughs> that's right you know it, I'm not as into technology as I used to be, and I, I've kind of cut back on a lot of the new upgrades and everything that I used to pay for. Uh, we don't spend as much money on shopping as we used to. Uh, we're trying to cut back on the eating out. Uh, just a lot of the a lot of the small things that add up to a lot of money over time. You know, cutting back on a, a few small things here and there add up to, to big numbers if you really think about it. So, yeah, I don't know if that's a very good answer, but. But no, basically, <laughs> cutting out the things that aren't important to us and still spending money on things that uh, we get pleasure from. Well, no, I think that's a good point, though, because we're not saying, oh, well, you have to spend money on these things we tell you you have to spend money on. Or, you know, just because just Jason doesn't want a car doesn't mean the rest of us have to go out and get rid of our cars. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's the beauty of personal finance and the personal yeah. journey, right? And part of it is finding a good deal when you do buy something. You know, maybe you, you buy a car, but maybe you're going to go out and find a good deal and try to find something that's low miles for a low cost instead of going out and spending 25 grand on a, on a brand new car. So. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to judge you, Peter, because, you know, when I bought my car almost five years ago, I went out and spent 25 grand on a new car that I financed Oops. that day. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not judging you, Peter. <laughs> 
Miranda, you, you, you hit you hit something really important. I think when we're we're setting, we're talking about budgeting for for our dream lifestyle. Uh, there's so many people that that will say, okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna set a goal to buy a car or uh, buy this product or that pro uh, product, and it's not necessarily something that they want. So it is important to to determine what what it is that you truly want versus kind of following this this regimen. So it's not about saying you can't have the things that you want, truly determine what is it that you want. And it's something that you truly love, then make sure you budget for it, you save for it uh, to make it happen. Um, I think that is kind of the key importance. And, and when I go and I talk to a whole bunch of people, I think one of the biggest issues is when they talk to a lot of financial advisors or some, uh, some even some coaches out there, they'll tell you, okay, well, uh, you need to set for this goal, that goal, and then all of a sudden, 30 days later, they're not following the budget. Uh, because they're not budgeting for their dream lifestyle, they're budgeting for for someone's version of their dream lifestyle. So if it's a car, definitely um, allocate funds to it. I mean, I allocate my funds to traveling and eating out because that's what I do enjoy. However, I, I do have a savings account where I stash um, twenty dollars here and there for a down payment for a car or purchasing a car out of, outright in cash. So I'm not saying I won't ever own a car in the future. Um, but at this moment, I've lived without it for four years. Yeah. Well, and I think you make a good point of, of figuring out what you want to budget for. And, and your point about, I, I mean, I hate the word budget, right? Because it does, it just, it just has all these connotations of restrictions everywhere. But you can change it around and kind of look at it as a spending, I, I call it a spending plan because that makes me feel good about things. <laughs> <laughs> makes me feel like I've got, I've got freedom and that I'm directing my fate, but uh, <clears throat> but being able to say, okay, well, like you said, here are the important things. You know, I want to make sure that I've set, I'm setting money aside in my retirement account. I've got my travel fund. I've got uh, my charitable donations. I got to make sure that you know I, I'm, I want my son to be able to do his extracurricular activities. I probably ought to be able to pay the rent. So you, you, I have, you know, I have this hierarchy of things that I, I spend my money on, and it's all kind of automated, uh, and it's the important stuff that matters to me: uh, the uh, the trip to the the spa, the, the facial, gotta have that. And so all of that stuff comes out first, and then if there's you know, there's usually something left over, then I can use it on stuff that doesn't matter as much but really yeah taking care of that stuff first is the key to creating some sort of budget or spending plan that you're gonna stick to uh, and I would love to hear from Tom and Peter both about you know how do you guys make it work how do you guys stick to your budget uh, well I, I think it's kind of what I said before we, we don't really spend on anything extra very often um, uh, similar to what you said, we we we, we pay we pay for the the, the mortgage and, <laughs> and get groceries and things like that. But uh, uh, anything else, yeah, we kind of look at it first. We we don't just go, oh, we'll just throw it on the credit card and figure it out later. We <laughs> we kind of consider, is this something we actually want? And and yeah, I agree that the budget term isn't always so <laughs> so positive, but uh, certainly at least stepping back and thinking about. What, what you're actually considering spending and, and if that actually will benefit you if it, if it's heading you towards your goals. Uh, I, I've always kind of liked the idea of, of even just don't make any impulse purchases at all, like uh, to take that day or whatever and, and think about it and, and mm -hmm. see if it's something you still actually want and if it, if it actually will do anything for you to make it worth the money. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's a... Really good point, and that reminds me of when we had Carl Richards on, and and he said, you know, before you, you know, as you're spending some on money on something, as you're putting it in your cart, stop and say, oh, that's interesting, and think about your reason behind it. What about you, Peter? How do you stay on track? Uh, I think the important part for us in staying on track is just making sure that we're regularly checking in on on what we're doing. You know, it can be extremely easy just to kind of just start drifting and and just let things happen around you and and before you know it, you're going over a waterfall. You know, you gotta sit back every once in a while and kind of reset. Sit down and talk about what your goals are. Look at where your spending and, and income and everything else is is at. And sometimes maybe even take a personal finance day. It's something we do here is just 
take a day off from work and, and sit down and actually go over everything in our finances, for, you know, everything from our insurance and and uh, what we're paying for all of our regular bills and maybe canceling cer certain bills and basically just take a day to go over our entire financial picture and just get everything straight. So for us, I think that's important uh, in staying on track is just checking in on things regularly. Yeah, and that's that's a good point too is – it's really easy to sort of drift off track and, and kind of follow that path of least resistance. <laughs> and after a while, you, you, you look and say, wait a sec, what happened here? Um, I know there are times when I, well, when we were moving and I was like, how, how, how did get all this stuff that I don't even like or use? What is this doing here? And so it, that can be something that's easy to do. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, I think we're getting close to time, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. One thing we like to do is do a final word, so we'll go around and do that. And Tom, what is your final word about uh, budgeting to create your dream lifestyle? Well, just that financial planning isn't just about retirement. You you, you kind of opened up with it that that it's very common for someone to work up to 40 years or more just so that they can retire and then start enjoying their life then. <laughs> it's just not something you have to wait till till then. So, if you if you plan things out right away, and and you you can kind of decide how you want your life to look five years from now, not just forty years from now, and and just plan it out so that you can reach that goal. Okay. And what about you, Peter? Well, uh, for me, I think it's just important to sit down and, and think about you know what you want your future to look like. What's your major priorities in your life, and and uh, how do you want those things to look, you know, 5, 10, or 25 years down the line? And then just take a look at where your current reality is, what's your situation that you're in right now, and how do you get to where you want to be from where you are? And then just sit down and think about what steps you need to take in order to get there. Okay, and Jason, what's your final word? Yeah, I echo everyone's statements. I think definitely <laughs> uh, gain clarity of what you value before setting financial goals. So this way you're setting goals that align with things that matter most to you. And definitely have that overall vision for your life because that's your guiding principle. That's what you want to work towards. And bringing back the, the budget, yeah, it seems limiting. I felt it was limiting as well. But then I look at it as a framework, a blueprint for you to achieve that vision in your life. So again, too, like using it as a as a tool. So I think that's very important for us to kind of take that word, think of it as a tool, a framework, again, a blueprint to towards that vision for our life. Great. And before we go off, why don't you let our audience know, Jason, tell us a little bit about your book that's coming out and a little bit about this sort of uh, movement that's sort of taken a life of its own, your road to financial wellness. Why don't you tell us about those things real quick? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so my book is coming out on June 7th. It's called uh, You Only Live Once, The Roadmap to Financial Wellness and a Purposeful Life. Uh, it is about a book that's that's not just personal finance. It's self-help. Uh, it's, it's personal skill development. Uh, the goal is to get you to change your money mindset. And then again, as I mentioned, gaining clarity of your values before you set financial goals and work towards that vision for your life. And since we do target uh, Generation Y, Millennials, but it is cross-generations, uh, cross it is about purpose, creating a life of purpose. And that is what the book is about. So it's not just about the numbers. It's about crafting and creating and living a purposeful life. Uh, so on June 7th as well, I'm going back on the road, uh, on the road to financial wellness. This time, I said this is going to be the road trip to end all road trips. <laughs> and um, 15,000 miles zigzagging across the country once again. Uh, we're going to start in my hometown of Elizabeth, New Jersey. We'll end uh, in San Diego on September 21st. We're planning 50 events, one on each, uh, one in each state. So it's going to be the first of its kind to complete this financial education movement uh, all across the United States. That's awesome, and I'm super excited that you're coming to my town, my hometown, Idaho Falls. So, <laughs> yeah, and then it's super exciting that you're going to have your last, uh, your last event there right around FinCon. So, excitement! It's going to be awesome. And for those uh, listeners and and viewers, definitely check out RoadToFinancialWellness.com for more information on uh, on the road trip. And I'd love to see many of you at the uh, the events. 
Okay, great. Well, thank you again for joining us, Jason. And <clears throat> make sure you come and visit us at moneymastermindshow.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher. Feel free to leave us a review. Or if you have an idea for what you would like to hear us talk about on a show in the future, go ahead and drop us a line and let us know. And until next week, be good with your money. Thanks for joining us on the Money Mastermind Show. Get more information at moneymastermindshow.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube and follow us on Google+.